Hi, it's Lil from Made by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. So, you have an old chair, but you want to make it a statement chair. You know, maybe a chair that you sit in your entryway or in a bathroom or in a bedroom. Just a chair that you can sit on occasionally. It's not a dinner time chair or something for your dining room. But you've got one and you, it's ugly and you don't know what to do with it. Well, follow along while I show you how to paint a chair, decoupage a chair and uh, make it into something wonderful. Okay, so you take a chair outside, this is best done outside and before we do anything I just want to show you this is the decoupage that I'm going to be using it's just plain tissue paper from the shop I got it from TK Maxx, it was £1.99 it has four sheets, I'm going to need two you've got two sheets left over for another project wow, I love the cheapness of that so that's cute and this is the colour the chair is going to be it's a rust all in one paint, indoor, outdoor self-leveling that's the color of the wood the top and this part you can nearly always take these parts out and i'll show you what i'm doing here and i'm going to repeat it on this part up here so before you start doing mm, move that that wouldn't be good before you start doing any kind of fabric you need to absolutely saturate it don't think that you're painting it think that you're dyeing it now i'm using an all-in-one paint for this that's fine it works with chalk paint but with chalk paint in between you need to give it a wee sand but with this stuff it kind of makes it sort of plasticky when it's an all-in-one paint and that's quite good because it's great for a tear and decoupage and don't think this won't last it will it'll stay fine you can sit on it you can use it it'll all be sealed in it'll be part of your design now i it's in, invariably if you can get something that doesn't have the texture of this that'd be different you know it'd be a bit easier for you but I've done it with one like this in the shed and it's fine so you make sure it's nice and wet now that's why I'm doing it outside on a beautiful sunny day in Scotland because this is going to make it a wee bit easier and this time did you notice I'm not using a mister I'm using a water sprayer so I can get plenty of water onto it now this is just a, a colour a light colour from a decoupage so I'm using a kind of grey white and all you do is you schmooze it into your fabric adding plenty of water you're going to give it multiple coats so that's okay but this is what you do you're not painting it on you're mashing it into the fibers and this is going to probably take about three coats same with the part the other part of the chair three coats just so that we can keep working on and this will kind of seal it as well it seals our fabric too so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go on and do this until I'll do it twice and then on my third coat I'll show you how it's looking. But this is why it's really good. If you live in a, live in a sunny climate, you're laughing. Scotland, not so much. You couldn't do this in the winter. Well, you could, but you'd have to leave it indoors somewhere. So that's how it looks. So I'm just going to get on and do that. Right, this is all dry. It was dry yesterday in the sun and it's the next day so we know it's completely dry now let me just talk about this you can do this to any fabric with any paint but remember you're not painting it you're more dyeing the fabric so you're adding plenty of water so it needs to be a lovely day or in a warm place that you can do multiple coats that it can dry now if it's chalk paint i would tend to you can make chalk paint paint end up looking quite soft and silky you just sand in between your coats and with chalk paint you seal it at the end you can seal it with wax so you can do any fabric you can do it that way however i'm using this if you can feel it's ended up kind of feels a bit like leatherette and that's what i want from my mod podge now normally i would apply any sort of decoupage paper with lacquer but um, because it's going to be a high traffic area somebody's going to be sitting it all the time somebody's been leaning on the back you really want something a little bit more with a bit more oomph so i'm using dishwasher um mod podge so put that to the side this is the decoupage paper that we're going to be using and i might actually choose this up a bit we'll see it you can already see it's already it looks so much better than it previously did you can choose any colors you could just paint it you can stencil some words on it you could on the back part not maybe not here you could put iod transfers you know at this point in time you've got it to this far you can do whatever you like with it but we're doing a simple summer sort of statement each year so how are you going to do the top part 
well take your paper and this is where it gets a little bit complicated what you need to spend a little bit of time doing this because this sort of paper generally sort of springs back so you have to kind of keep going round it and round it and round it now what i will say is what i've learned is always cut slightly bigger always cut slightly bigger than you're going to need because um that way you can tuck it in whereas if you cut too short you're piecing parts and it becomes a little bit more awkward so you can see what i'm doing i'm just kind of literally chasing the shape with my fingers making sure that i've got where i want it to go here and i'll know that i've done round here I'm just going back over it again don't shift it around so that you know you've got it right and as i said this part really takes a little bit of time however it's worth putting the time in to do it. Down around here. Now normally with other sort of decoupage paper you could probably turn it round and you'd get a rough idea where you're going but this is quite bright. Now I'm going a wee bit over here. And hopefully, when you take it away, you should have a sort of shape that you need to follow. Um, with some scissors now. I need to put my glasses on just to check where I'm going. But my sort of rough shape now, I'm just going to cut it out really roughly. And we can go back once I've got the sort of rough random shape I'm looking for. And this might take a little bit of just really peering at it. So you can see, I'm just kind of really roughly cutting it out. Keep all these parts, you can do something else with them. Why throw them away? The reason why I chose white was because I wanted this to show up nicely. So let's have a wee look at how well I did this. So yeah, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply it and I'm not gonna worry too much about these raggy edges. I can come back and I can get those. I'll see if I can take some of this excess away because I really don't need all of this. And this is why I'm saying it takes a little bit of time. So I'm going to go away off camera and I'm just going to do the same thing again and just take away some of this excess because some of it you can tuck in, but my, I've kind of gone too crazy here. But again, don't go mad. You don't want it too short. So I'll go off camera and I'll just get this ready. Got my Mod Podge, I've also got a water sprayer and my brush is quite damp because this is heavy and this is very thin. This is just actual tissue paper, so it's the thinnest um, gradient of paper. It's very thin, so you're gonna end up ripping it if you go too crazy and Mod Podge is quite stiff medium when you get going. So you need to make sure that you cover everywhere it doesn't matter if you get it on your chair around the edges but around the edges is really important you need to make sure that your mod podge is covered everywhere now you can use a really heavy top coat sealer but as i said this is i'm wanting to make sure that you know this is a high traffic area just going to give it a wee scoot, scoot of water just to keep it keep it moving i'm just going to move my tissue paper for a moment making sure that i've got plenty down in those edges now we'll trim anything at the end once it's completely dry with a with a bleed but let's just do this right okay I've got <laughs> oh dear what can i say about that not a lot just need to make sure that I've got the same on both sides. Now, what I would suggest is I'm actually going to, um, I need a clean brush. Hang on a minute. I'm just going to get a clean brush. I had to change my brush out. Can you see that? My brush was bleeding um, a different colour. It's obviously not been washed correctly. So I've got a clean brush here because you need a clean brush. You don't want it going all over your decoupage paper. So smooth it out with your brush. Smooth all your wrinkles. This is where you realise you haven't cut it right. Mm. If you've got any 
kind of pull it back really gentle and work from the top down. Smoothing out your wrinkles as you go, making sure that you're, you're getting it down into all the edges. And we are going to go back over this and give it another two coats of this once we've cut off our excess to make sure that it can withstand a lot of traffic. So there we have it. And how clean and fresh and lovely does that chair look? And you haven't gone to any effort. All you've done is painted it and spent $1.99 on some tissue paper that you liked. Don't overwork it. I think that's, as, I'm going to leave it at that for that just now. And we'll get this little part at the top once it's dry. In fact, to be honest with you, it doesn't actually look like it needs a huge amount. There's a bit round here and that part at the top, but there we have it. So that's our top part. So I'm just going to get ready for our bottom part. Right, so we're going to do the bottom portion of the chair now. I would suggest you do that outside your chair because you're going to slip this back in and it could end up pulling. See what a nice clean edge. I'm just going to move it onto my carpet. Uh, again, you need your plate with your Mod Podge on. Mod Podge. And I would give it a wee scoosh just to start with. And again, my brush was damp. These are brushes that came from my paint sink this morning, so they're, they're all pretty damp. Making sure you get right round all your edges. This is a really good way of updating your, your kitchen chairs if you wanted to do it, and, or your, you know, any chair really. Maybe you want to chat selling chairs. Chairs are hard to paint. I, I wouldn't want to do chairs all the time. Yep, the best way to paint a chair is to put it upside down and do all the legs and underneath first. Right. I think we're good to go here. Now our corners could be problematic, so we're just going to work slow. I didn't do a huge amount of a... Uh, measuring for this to be honest with you I think it goes this way yeah. Mod Podge has a little bit of wiggle room I'm just checking I've got enough for this side enough for this side enough for this side right okay so with this one instead of starting from the top with this side you're going to start from the middle and work your way out and get your wrinkles to go out to the edges now it had texture on it with the sort of fabric that it had, so you know you, you you are working against that too. If you're lifting it up to pull it back down, make sure that you do it very very gently because as soon as your tissue paper gets slightly moist, it'll rip. So you're working with it gently. Some wrinkles you maybe you might have to kind of live with. There. Now take it to the edge. So you get the you get what I'm trying to do. I'm just now sticking down and making sure that it's now stuck down to the edges. And again, what we'll do is we'll cut off any excess with a bleed. Making sure I've got plenty of glue on them. You're going to have to try and do a wee fold like that, which I'll try and show you. There's a bit more on this side, which will be a bit trickier to show you. I'll just cut this off and I'll show you how I'm dealing with the corners. So literally, what I'm doing with the corners is... Um, it's getting a bit wrinkly. Making sure I don't have any wrinkles and then with my brush I'm kind of doing a little fold like that and just fold it down like that. That's all I'm doing with my corners. 
So I'm going to go on and do this and then we'll let it dry and we'll move on to the next part. Maybe I'll stop or maybe I'll do more. I mean, probably I will do more, but but you, this is the general, once I show you the next part, this is the general way to cover a chair like this. So while the summer chair is drying, I thought we may as well have a little bit of fun and show you there's really so much things you can do with chairs. I've done this one. This is going to be the autumn chair. Now, with this one, I did exactly the same process, but I didn't paint the background white because I wanted a dark. So I painted the whole chair green and I applied a, a Roy Cycled um, decoupage paper and put the link in it. I can't remember what it's called in the description. That was applied in exactly the same way. I've, I've dried it. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these autumn stamps from IOD. Again, I can't remember the name, but I'll get Martin to put the link in the description box. Um, and I'm going to stamp something autumny, or if you're in another country, I think you call it fall. But um, so I was just kind of thinking of my sort of placement and I think I'm going to do these two sort of kind of here with these apples coming down from here. And I've got some other bits and pieces. I want to leave this negative space for my words. So this is going to kind of how it looks. And this bottom part of the chair, I'm just going to st stamp these two here like this. And maybe just some leaves. Um, maybe come in from this corner, but maybe not. Maybe that might just be something like that be enough on this side. Now I'm going to, I'll do this bottom part first. Um, just because I can remove this. Um, because I'm going to lie the chair down flat so I can stamp this. But it's just to get you sort of going. Um, so um, just remove this and put it down in front of us here. So I picked this paper because I, I've had it in my stash for whoa, quite a long time now maybe about a year and um, I bought these IOD stamps last year but by the time I got them they were a wee bit delayed in the UK by the time I got them we'd gone past that and there was nothing I could do with them so they're, they're all new I haven't I haven't used them I've maybe used some of the leaves and other projects so this is a good chance to get these done now I know it's only July but I'm, I'll get the sweats I see other YouTubers doing things about autumn and I think mm, well and this was a good opportunity to show you something different with the chair so I've got my ink. I'm just going to, I want it quite juicy, so I'm just going to load it up. And if you have ink pads, you can buy the IOD ink. I I, I like this ink. It, it works best for me and it really does stay on. So that's why I use it. So it's been made nice and juicy. And um, I shouldn't really be doing this on the stable floor because it's a little bit, but I will. So make sure you've seen me stamping a million times it's not like you're seeing anything new here but and I'm just going to paint them in I'm not going to paint the whole thing in and then stamp over the top of it I'm just going to roughly sort of with a little artist brush just give it a little bit of color in a sort of loose style I'm not going to spend three days on it so got me pumpkin and let's just kind of imagine where I want it so I want the other little one to go behind it. So I think I'm going to do something like this. Now we've got a squeezy surface, which I sometimes think is quite good when you've got a movable surface. With it being on the stable floor, it's actually quite good. I don't know if you've ever found with stamps, I mean, maybe you stamp on the plastic back and you don't do it the way I do, but sometimes when I've used a little bit of corn flour and I've got it on my hands, my hands are nice and slippy to move over it. And because it's been on the stable floor, it's working for me really well. So just make sure that you do all your detail without shifting it around. I've kind of shifted my stock. It might have a little bit of ghosting. I'm making sure that I've got the bottom part. Um, so hopefully this will come out quite nice. Enough that we can paint it in anyway. So there's our pumpkin. Now, I'm just going to set that one up here and I'm just going to do the little one. Now, I don't bother with masking off or any of those nonsensey things. I just do it by eye.
Oh, the world is so much clearer when I put my glasses on. And I think I'm going to do... Hmm? Oh, and my glasses have been repaired again. Martin repaired them yet again last night. <laughs> uh, so it's all good. I can see. Now, when I kind of when I'm not using a mask, I just kind of don't, you know, I don't, I'm not I'm not pushing on where the other part of the pumpkin is if I've gone over a little bit. And even if it goes over a little bit, I'm not I'm not terribly concerned about it. I think art should be free, and I think it should be fun. And I think if you spend too much time worrying about the little things, you'll never get anything done. And I used to do that, but now I don't. So I'm just making sure that this is all stamped up nice. Pull that one off. Now I want to have the my sycamore leaf. I think it's sycamore. I'm not sure. I'm sure you'll tell me that it isn't. Grab it and I'm going to have it just here. That's all I'm going to do to the bottom. And we will, once we've painted it, we'll have to go over it again with Modge Podge um, to make sure that it's all sealed in. It will suffer, like everything suffers, it's paper. It, you need to put a couple of coats on it because it will wear out, I mean, over time. But if it's just an accent chair, it'll be absolutely fine. And it shouldn't crack. Sometimes you find if you do it with chalk paint and you wax it, it's a little bit more tricky. You find you get a little bit of movement and cracking. But I think with that uh, and everything paint that seals and does everything on the bottom, it's kind of a bit more. And you can you don't even need to put the decoupage paper and you can just print straight on your chair. I'm just giving you ideas for chairs. And that's my leaf. My leaf moved a bit. It's a bit dark around the edges. So I'm going to just turn that round so you can see. I'm going to do the same in the top part. And I'll come back once I've got my paint all set up. And I'm just going to show you how I'm going to quickly paint it in. So in my palette here, I've got a little bit of brown and a little bit of orange. And I've put a little bit of water in it. Um, and I'm just going to mix up a sort of colour that... You know, some of it is overtly orange and some of it's not so much. So, um, where to start? I'm going to go over to the house in a minute and get a proper brush because I'm actually painting this with a script brush and that's not going to work for me. So I'm just kind of avoiding the lines in a rough way. Just like this, you can see, just going in between it, anywhere where there's negative spaces, paint those in orange and change the colour of your browns as you go along. Put a bit more brown in your orange um, just to kind of give it a little bit of tone. So, great big negative space here and I'll really get a chance to put some bright orange on this part. So that's, that's all I'm going to do, just really roughly. It was just to show that it's a pumpkin. I mean, we're not going to get bent all the shape about it. I'm going to go on and I'm going to just going to keep on doing my design. I'm just painting it in as we go. I mean, you could watch this, but it's going to take a long time for me just to kind of throw this together. So I'll stop now and I think I'll go and get a better brush. So I've done one of the pumpkins and I've introduced, obviously, it's a yellowy colour which I can mix and um, sometimes if you kind of got a patch you can just rub it with your finger and you can still see the stamp underneath and you're not losing any of the details so that one's just going to go behind there so if it was going behind it would have a darker edge a bit of a darker edge here where that one is and there and I want a bit more orange up in here And with the leaves, because they're, they're from the same sort of palette, I might need a little bit more brown here um, and a bit more water. I'm just going to mix some more orangey sort of kind of colours through this. 
So again, it's the same sort of deal. I mean, you're not going to get, oh, that's a bit dark. Just rub that in. If you, if you think you haven't got enough water in your paint, just kind of like, Add a little bit of water. And I can walk put some yellow in here as well. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just kind of mixing the colours through it, but trying not to lose too much of the detail underneath. Um, I want to introduce, because it's leaf, a little a bit more of a sort of ready. Now I've got this ready brown, or I've got red red brown but i think the red red so i'm going to just mix a little bit of this with a little bit of this just to kind of light brighten up my red and then i'm just going to put a wee bit of red in it i want to kind of incorporate and this sounds a little bit crazy a little bit of this sort of kind of there's a sort of bluey kind of color and it goes nice with the orange so and it kind of kind of maybe for just a little bit of the shadowing, maybe make it a little bit more abstract. So I'm just going to show you that too before I go off camera in case you come back and go, well, when did she do all that? There. And we can even be quite bold and do something like this if we're going to be ab abstract about it. And do some red around here. It's all about your brush strokes and how you apply it as well. If it looks like it's moving and it's got movement, it'll look like that when it's done. Now, this was the blue I was talking about. And this is why I'm saying it could end up a little bit abstract here. I'm not saying we want to put loads on it. Just want I'm watering. Now, these are um, the self-sealing, self-leveling, but I can add water to make them sort of watercolours. Um, so where would I want to put it? Maybe here beside here. Just smoosh it along my finger. Maybe a bit here. Here. Just in sort of darker areas. There. Um, I'm going to put some here. And add some on the leaf. Now, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just, just putting it on where I feel like I want it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay some up here against this um, orange because that will look quite nice. Then just smush it with my finger. Right. Okay. So I still have my stock to do, which is the brown. And I'm just going to. Do this. Add a bit of yellow, and then I'm just going to mix it through with my finger. There we go. Highlight on top. Highlight on the lightest. Right. I'm just going to turn it around and show you what I've done. So there they are. They've been painted in, and I've added some bright reds and some blues to just accent it. When you put the blue near the yellows it turns into a nice green as well so that's something to think about when you use colour. So that's all I'm going to do on the bottom part. I'm going to go ahead and give you a sort of rough idea of what I'm going to stamp on the top. I'll do that and we'll reconvene at the words. I finished it all now so I've done the apples here, the leaves all the way, kind of building a scene round about and the word autumn is going to go across here. And obviously you saw me do this part of the chair. Now I got a little bit of orange on this earlier. Nothing to do with this. I'd actually did it earlier. It got stuck on the cable of my heat gun and whacked against it. But I think I'm just going to leave it. I might do some other touches of orange here and there. So we're going to go on. I'm going to stamp the word autumn on here. I have my small, I think they're called, no, it's a Harper mould. I don't know. I'll get my aunt to link what the small typeface is. From IOD, they're quite useful. Uh, there's no capitals, so we're just having to go with without the capital. And <coughs> and Matt, sorry, <laughs> Matt, Martin's coughing in the background. But we'll, we'll let him off. You have to cough. So I'm just kind of winging it where I want it to go. So I think I'm going to start about here. Now with these ones, I always end up putting them on wonky, so it's all okay. I'm, I'm happy to go with that. I could put them on the mount, but I don't very often use a mount. I think it's just a little bit. So e. Now this is where I have to get my, my, my spelling correct. I could have got a roller that might have helped, but I don't have one. Well, I, d I have many, but not here. They're over in the paint sink. So 
you can see what I'm doing. I'm just putting the words autumn on it. Once I've done that, I'm going to give this part and this part another full coat of Mod Podge. And then we'll be ready to show in off both chairs. Okay, so the tail of two chairs, the summer and the autumn chair. What are the benefits of doing this? If you haven't got any upholstery skills and you think, oh, that's going to be above my pay grade, this is a great way of doing chairs. And as I said, plenty of coats of dishwasher Mod Podge. It shouldn't crack. It'll be quite hard wearing, as hard wearing as most things are. And the really good thing about this is, which isn't the same with fabric, is you can wipe it. So if you get a mess on it, you can clean it, whereas fabric is stained, unless you use a stain guard on your fabric. But, you know, it's a good idea to do this. Um, so what did we do? We painted our chairs. This one here, I painted white. Now, I did it outside because I need each three, the three layers to get it as white enough that this wouldn't, the dark wouldn't show through. And to kind of eradicate some of the layers of the kind of jacquard fabric, I did three layers of the white um, on this. Two layers of the Guild Lane. My paint brand is just, it's really good. So two layers of this. The green, what I did was just two, two coats of the green on the chair and two coats, again, just not three on the green. I wanted it much darker for when I put the recycled paper on. I stamped that one uh, with the IOD stamps. The I think it's something Harvest, Autumn Harvest. I'll get Martin to link it. And I stamped it with those stamps. I quickly just kind of in a painterly way painted in the, the stamping, put the word off autumn on it and because I did my little orange splodge down there I just put a couple of kind of little kind of details on it and they're both done. They're self-sealing paint so I don't need to redo any sealing for the chair and the Mod Podge. I've had plenty of coats of Mod Podge and they're done, they're finished. So a quick, simple, not a huge amount of skill, easy way to updo some of your chairs to make an accent chair for the corner of your room or for your dining room, which you're only maybe sitting in for like more kind of celebrate kind of occasions. Not that I have a dining room that I do that. I don't, we all just sit in the kitchen, but you know, it sounds posh. Um, if that's what you want to do, fair dues. So that's it. Now I just want to quickly run through. Chairs are brilliant. Chairs are a good way to start when you start doing furniture. They're difficult to paint chairs. You go round and round and round and round and round the houses, paint them from upside down, which is much easier. Then flip the chair over because then you've got all the upside upside down pieces covered. Do it inside because if your customer takes the cushion off and, or, you, or if it's for yourself, you want it to look nice and clean and done inside. Now I have this one off to the side. I have a YouTube video of this one. This was another chair that I did and what I did with this one, and, the, and you'll see the link, There's a, there is a, Martin, I'll put a link to this video in it, and this was a piece of old fabric that I stamped with um, IOD stamps, and I watercolored it in, I ironed it to seal in the paint, and this is, this is our studio chair, I use it all the time for staging, um, it's just had, this one had loads of detail, loads of palette knife scratches, loads of distress, but here it is still going and it still looks as good as the day I did it. And the good thing about it being in the studio is it doesn't matter if it gets splattered with paint because who would know. But here's another chair that I've done as well. So cheers, go forth, find an old chair, have a practice. The tissue paper that I used on this one was one ninety nine, and I've still got two sheets left. It was just from TK Maxx. So um, look out for interesting, nice tissue papers. Now with tissue paper, you must remember, always, always, always put the white underneath it so that it's got its best chance of being its, at its brightest. If you leave it dark underneath, it just won't have, wouldn't have the same effect. Different from this one because I wanted that autumn sort of dirty, grungy, warmer toned colours for that one. So that's it. So I've been Leo from Me by Marley. And um, thanks for watching this video. Thanks for those that are currently subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, could you please consider subscribing? Give me a like, give me a share it, a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Thank you.